Hey everybody, it's Andrew here at Vespa Portland with a different video. This is my own scooter. We're gonna talk about it instead of uh, everything else we usually talk about on this channel. So it's a Monday right now and I just rode here to wait on a customer who's coming down from very far north Washington and I got some time to kill. So let's do this quick video. Um, my scooter, you know, I didn't even bother cleaning it, be honest with you, uh, because the truth is, I'm bad at that. I wash my scooter two, three times a year, maybe. Uh, most of the time, I ride almost every single day, rain or shine, and you know, that's no way to keep a scooter clean. Um, so we're gonna walk through this thing just exactly as it is. Let's check it out. Here's everything I got going on on my scooter. All right, so the very first thing we talk about is the color. Uh, the Supertech, the first color it ever came in is this Gray matter, Grigio materia, concrete gray, similar to what you see on all the Toyota Tacomas, that sort of thing. This, this gray color is kind of working its way through the car industry. I personally fell in love with this color immediately because back in the day, uh, before Vespas, I rode a lot of BMX bikes uh, for years and years and years uh, down in San Diego, California, from racing to jumping on handrails. So my BMX bike, one of which uh, at the time was the same concrete gray. You know, you take your frame, you sand it down, take everything off, sand it up, and then go to Home Depot, pick a spray paint color, have your dad buy it because you're not 18, you can't buy any spray paint. Kind of just brought back that nostalgia for me. And when I saw this, like, well, that's the color if I'm gonna go with the GTS. Previously, I had been riding a white GTS 300 that was a trade-in. Uh, from a from another customer, loved the GTS. I already had a, a Vespa Primavera 150, and wanted you know something a little bigger. I'm six feet tall, and so the GTS gives you a little bit more room in the cabin, basically, uh, more room for the feet, more room to kind of sit back from the bars. Uh, the 150 is perfectly fine for kind of in city stuff, but anything longer, I always felt a little cramped on the 150 at my height. So GTS I wanted to get so I could do some more freeway stuff, some further away rides that sort of thing, and uh, decided, you know, might as well go with a newer one, um, get the warranty and all that. Um, I've had it since, I think, August of 2020. It's now March 2022. Uh, there's been a couple people who have asked to buy it because this color doesn't exist anymore, and it seems like the general public finds out about colors like a year after they discontinue a color. Vespa generally has a color for two years, and then they, they put it on the shelf. They'll bring it back someday, I think this is the same color as like the GT60 that was from like 06. But anyway, yeah, um, it seems like everybody finds out about the colors too late. And so now there's been some interest. Um, but I'm gonna hang on to it. I've thought about selling it before, but I just like it too much. Uh, it's too fun of a bike and there's no color in the current lineup that I think I would prefer to have more than this. So no is the answer. Don't ask me to sell this thing. Um, my lady, Michelle, was not riding back when I got this thing. She wasn't riding herself, now she does. So she's shorter, so I got these passenger foot pegs right here. These passenger foot peg extenders are awesome if you have a shorter passenger on your scooter often. First off, you get kind of a brushed aluminum passenger foot peg. I switched that out to black. If I had really tried hard, I could have taken this apart and had it powder coated to be all black, but you know, I lazy, I guess. Uh, this would have sat in here just fine. Instead, I got these, uh, these passenger foot pegs from SIP. We usually have these in stock upstairs in black or in that brushed aluminum. And all it does is just brings this back about four inches. So when this is opened, um, your passenger can more easily get their foot to it instead of being up here. So when she was sitting on the back before, she couldn't exactly reach, so there was a lot of teeter-tottering on the scooter. This brings it back so it's a nice, comfortable ride. I've considered taking it off since she now rides her own scooter, but I don't know, you never know. She might be on the back someday and then it's just easy to have and I'm used to having it there. Moving up to the top here, I have the Oxford Adventure heated grips. I have the Coso Apollos on my Primavera, but on this one, the Oxfords. The main difference is on the Oxford, there's no thumb control up here on the grip. Instead, there's a little box. So it's gotta be mounted somewhere on the scooter. This is the perfect place to do it on the GTS. If you watched our heated grips video, you've already seen this. But basically, um, you can just you know press through the the percentage of how much heat you want coming through them. And uh, it's, it's fantastic to have that, that comfort on your hands on a colder day. Next to this, you might see this beautiful cord hanging out of my scooter. It's because, where's my key? I don't know. There's a USB port inside of your glove box. So I just have this uh, 
USB cable hanging out of here and it just kind of pinches into place. This isn't the best solution. I've always looked for like a flatter kind of like ribbon style, but they just don't seem to be made. So every like year or so, I break the wire inside of this and I have to just get a new one, but whatever, it's fine. And then what that does, let me move the camera a little bit, is it goes up to my RAM mount, GPS RAM mount. Uh, love this thing. It, my phone is completely locked in on this. I used to have the X mount, which was also good, but this just blows it out of the water. That's my personal recommendation for uh, phone mounting, if you need it. And then I, of course, just take this and then, you know, plug it right into the phone. It's got plenty of slack so I can turn the bars, but it doesn't get caught on anything. So coming back down to the bottom of the scooter here for a second, the reason it's on the stand in general is because uh, the HPE GTSs consume oil a little faster than the older GTSs do, especially if you ride a lot of freeway. And my commute on the freeway is about seven-ish miles each direction. So um, I go through oil fairly quickly. Um, not like catastrophically fast, but enough that I should be checking it in between my services at least a few times. Ideally, you're checking your oil like once a month. I have learned that I can go five-ish and then uh, with my, my normal riding and be fine and, and know where the level's gonna be. Uh, but to help with that, because the, the oil dipstick is kind of in a crappy spot on the in the new design. I got this sight glass version. Uh, this I think also came from SIP, it's German made, and it has this little sight glass on it, which the Vespas used to have, but they don't have anymore. The nice thing about this is when this is about half full, my oil is at the right spot. If I can come around here and it's kind of an empty looking glass, I know I need to add some. That's just a nice little thing. I feel like everyone with an HPE should probably have that. Um, Get it added at your next service. Um, most, at least we carry them. I don't know if every other shop does, but you can order them from Scooter West, from SIP, whatever. And it's just a nice way to immediately see where your level of oil is so you don't burn up your engine. And down below the uh, oil pan with the sight glass, I also have a battery tender lead installed here just in case my bike's gonna sit for an extended period of time. So far throughout its life, it has not. I ride it every week, usually every single day. Uh, but if I ever needed to just plug it in quickly in the garage, you can just pop this off right here and then plug directly into the battery tender that's plugged into the wall. That's easier than taking off the battery cover and like putting the alligator clips on the positive and negative. If you get a battery tender from us or from wherever else, you should see the pigtail uh, also included in that package. And what you'd want to do is, you know, pop off your battery cover, put the pigtail on the very top of the, uh, the battery terminals. You don't want to have anything between the terminals and the battery itself. Put it on top of that and then kind of snake it through the back here and then kind of zip tie it onto the swing arm out of the way. Get under there and look around, see if there's anything that looks like it's going to get hot. You don't want to melt the cable. Aesthetics wise, I added uh, black trim to this scooter. It comes with the kind of standard uh, grayish metallic looking uh, trim. Uh, I thought the black would be a better contrast with the gray. Toyota agrees with me on the Tacomas. Also added the black cover on the fork here and then switched out uh, to the black uh, crown there on the, on the fender. In the US market, the stock GTS comes with black uh, chevrons. The uh, Australian, I think, market show, has yellow. I don't know if I'll keep them. In, to, in some respects, it kind of feels a little cartoony to me to have them be yellow. It's almost too much but um, I'm leaving them in for now. I actually kind of forgot I had them until this exact moment. Got the black ones still in a box somewhere. Uh, next up, I'm talking about the turn signals real quick. These are another SIP kind of thing. You can get them in a clear lens like I got or smoked. I went with clear just, you know, I, my kind of philosophy is do one illegal thing at a time. I don't know if smoked turn signals are illegal, but I don't know, maybe I'm speeding and then a smoke turn signal is what gets me pulled over. Maybe I just made that up, I don't know. Point is, this is what it looks like. It's got a really cool LED running light and this nice white. And when you put the turn signal on, that goes away and the entire unit flashes this kind of yellow color. Let me kill the light so you can see it better. Looks kind of cool. And then when you cancel the turn signal, it fades back into the white. And um, yeah, it's a nice little mod and it's LED. So it should last a, quite a long time. And it's the same situation on the back where it's a red, LED light, and as you hit the turn signal, it fades to, it just switches to the, uh, the amber flashing, and when you cancel it out, it's gonna fade right back into red. Um, just really like the effect, I think it's pretty cool. Back here as well, the tail light 
uh, bezel is chrome on the uh, stock Supertech and most stock Vespas except the Racing 60s series. I switched out to the black bezel just to kind of, again, tie in the black and gray thing. Uh, and then I've got a brake light modulator on here. Um, gives me a little peace of mind when I'm out riding. If I pull the brake and hold it, it just flashes before it goes solid. Um, I feel like there's always a lot of people behind me who are just scrolling their phone, checking Instagram, and uh, I can just sit there at a light and just kind of every now and then do that as a car is coming up on me and it just feels safer. So I added a black flat rack. Again, you can get this in chrome. I got it in black. Some people really don't like top cases. They think they look weird. I think it's fine. Um, I commute a lot on my scooter, so it's definitely kind of necessary for me. I got to put a laptop in there. You know, got to have a different hat, a rain suit, etc. cetera. Uh, you can see the dash a little bit. You see the heated grips there, ram mount, uh, the bar ends. So I've been a little lazy with this thing. I was kind of gung-ho on getting it all black and gray, but um, I have not changed out the bar ends yet, so they're still gray. Also, I still have this, or chrome, I still have the stock brake lever as well. Maybe someday I'll get around to making that black, uh, but I don't really want to mess with it until it's absolutely necessary. Uh, maybe at my first next brake fluid flush because um, I have the Aprilia Tuono mirrors on here and one of them needs an adapter. And because of that adapter, it's because of the thread uh, direction. Uh, it's a little bit of a pain in the ass to tighten these things. So once they're set and tight, I don't want to mess with them. And I don't want to take it off just to get a black lever. But um, once I actually have to take this all apart, then we'll, we'll add them maybe. So yeah, that's the Aprilia Tuono mirror. I think they look cool. They, uh, they don't exactly match the aesthetic of the scooter, but they give it a little bit sportier of a look. On the front here, I've got the Cruiser windscreen. It's the shorter one. Um, offers just enough uh, wind protection to kind of make the freeway a little less jarring on the body, uh, but it's not super tall. I liked it a little more low profile. I also got a black bezel on the front headlight just to kind of, again, tie that together. My primary use of this thing is kind of like how I used to like a BMX bike, just go exploring. It was kind of my favorite thing to do, and it gives the same sort of feel as, as riding a BMX bike when I was a kid. You know, go get some tacos. That's, what else do you want in life? And I guess lastly, I'll show you the storage, because uh, that might be a surprise. I have literally no idea what's in my storage. We have a really bent up cell phone charging cable. Oh, look at that. I actually have business cards in here. I had no idea. I did know I had these. Vespa Portland stickers and some uh, spent ones as well. I try to put these up all over town. If you're uh, ever at a taco shop around the city and you see a Vespa Portland sticker outside, you know I have given that my seal of approval. All right, under the seat we have, we have a pile of masks, which uh, as of yesterday are no longer needed in Oregon, but who knows? I guess I'll just keep these under here. I also have a pile of more Vespa stickers. I've also got some gloves from this company called Fist. They are like a sushi <laughs> glove. These gloves are frankly a little useless. They're kind of like mountain bike gloves, but um, I don't know, I like them. They keep my hands warm. Uh, this one has a little rice underneath the bottom. A mask that can go. Uh, this is a fire protection receipt when the fire marshal was checking us out. Um, I've got a microfiber towel, towel for oil. I've got these LED taco string lights, which I think I put on around Halloween because there was no Halloween lights. So these are tacos. If you know me, that's on brand. I got some other gloves. These are a Scorpion Bixby. Those are nice. Scooter West, Vespa Motorsport, Vespa Everywhere koozie under the seat. Oh, forgot I had this under here. This is a uh, jump start pack. Basically, if you plug that thing in and charge it up, if your battery dies, you can use that to jump the battery on your scooter. Um, nice to have. I think they're only like a hundred bucks, kind of a worthwhile thing. More sticker trash. Obviously I'm graffitiing stickers all over town. I have a stop and go motorcycle tire repair kit under here, uh, which thankfully haven't had to use. Screwdriver. Oh, this is for the GoPro. So if you've ever seen like the, the riding videos we do on this channel, I have to take the GoPro off with a screwdriver and just to keep it super tight. Put it on there with a the screwdriver as well. Cat crap, uh, anti-fog cleaner. Oh, this is just the Scott version. Basically you spray this on your, uh, your visor on your helmet. It keeps it nice. Funny thing is I haven't used it. <laughs> so stuff I'm just carrying in case, I guess. Latex gloves for, I don't know, I guess if I got to get oily. A squeegee that someone gave me, I can't remember. You put it on the finger on your glove and it's a squeegee. You can wipe off your helmet, but I don't think I've ever used it. Got a 17 millimeter wrench under here because I am notorious for banging into my mirrors and making them loose. And that's how you tighten them back down. Got my auto insurance and registration. 
I have a Sharpie for some reason. This is a, uh, oh, this is like a fuel tank filler. So like you put it over the gas and then it allegedly makes it not spill. Brooke, one of our customers gave me this. I have yet to use it, but it's in here. So if you're watching Brooke, just know it wasn't a wasted purchase. This is what I think is one of the most fantastic tire pressure checkers I've ever used. It just seems real accurate and then you can clear it out when you're done with that. I've got another GoPro mount, random knife and uh, Oh, an AirTag, an Apple AirTag, which is not going to stay in here. I'm actually going to hide it somewhere else on the scooter. But what that thing will do is for, you know, 29 bucks, you can pop that thing somewhere on your scooter, hide it somewhere, and um, I can always see the location of my scooter. And this thing is super useful uh, and super sensitive. If I just walk two blocks away from Vespa Portland down to Sheridan Market to grab some lunch, uh, it immediately notifies the phone and says, hey, your, your Vespa GTS is no longer near you. So that's, that's real nice to have. The downside is sometimes I'm sitting at a bar and uh, I'm just far enough out of range and I'm about to dig into a hamburger and then my phone tells me that and I have to run outside and see if someone was taking my scooter, uh, which thankfully so far, knock, knock, knock on wood, they have not. But it's nice to have the peace of mind that um, you know where your bike is. So anyway, that is about it for my Vespa GTS Super Tech. I got it because I love the color and I love the GTS. I have actually never really bothered with using the screen. Uh, that comes with it. It wouldn't matter to me if that was a screen or the more analog version on the other GTSs. I was just kind of sold on the color. Thanks for watching. This is Xander here at Vespa Portland. See you next time.